Renaissance Days is an exhibition um, of paintings that Geoffrey's been working on um, in a quite a dedicated fashion over the past 10 years or so, um, and in an escalating um, way. So many of you know many of them have been um, created over the over the previous couple of years, really all been completed and been finished. Um, just before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you um, and acknowledge Jeffrey and his family for being here today um, and any of the lenders um, for this exhibition. One of the really unique things I think about this series of work um, is how closely and privately it, it's held. Um, so these are works that we've um, diplomatically extracted from many people's homes uh, rather than institutions which we often will borrow from, um, which makes it a very unique experience, I think, as an exhibition. Um, but it also relies on a high level of goodwill from the people that were prepared to give them up for a year. Um, so, um, yeah, just to acknowledge any of you that are here, um, I hope you're enjoying seeing your painting again. Um, and... and um, and we thank you for supporting our project. Um, so for anyone that hasn't met um, Jeffrey, this is Jeffrey Harris, the artist. Um, and the exhibition, um, this body of work, <coughs> we've hung it sort of in a loose chronology. So the first painting we, that we encounter is essentially the, the leaping off point from, for this series of work. And, it, and it's an interesting painting in that respect, I think, of all of them. It, it's a painting that's sort of anchored um, in, in, the, in the past, wouldn't you say, Geoffrey? We've talked a little bit about that. But. Yeah, it relates more to the earlier body of work that I was doing, the orange, the colour, especially express, uh, the orange and reds, and um, which make it a different painting from the rest of the paintings in the exhibition, yeah. Mm. But the portrait, the head, is a, relates to probably the portraits over there. And, um, but yeah, the, the crucifixion and the colouring um, yeah, do belong, it does belong to another series of paintings. But it's such a, struck me as such a good painting and a strong, intense painting that um, it also is a great lead into these other paintings. Mm. Mm. It's, it's sort of interesting to me um, <coughs> in that it speaks to uh, an earlier series of very, very large paintings. Mm. And I think that that's something that is often a surprise to people when they encounter this body of work particularly, is the scale um, and the expectation um, that surrounds your your career, um, that you're a, a painter of scale. And, and um, I know that you have always worked at a small scale in parallel or at times um, despite being well known for very large works. And I wondered if you might talk a little bit about um, what particular function these very small, intense paintings play for you um, and why you felt over the last period of time that it was such an interesting and important kind of line of inquiry for your work. I just think the intimacy and the one-to-one -one relationship that you have with a painting of this size um, is important and was impo is important for me at the moment. Um, at the large paintings, uh, that, uh, yeah, I, not so. That they don't have the same intensity and focus that you can capture in something on a small scale. And this was apparent when I went over to Europe quite a lot. That the paintings that struck me were paintings that were about the size, a very intimate one-to-one -one relationship, and very large canvases. Often seemed empty, and you walk past them. Um, so. Uh, and I had often done a lot of small paintings previously, and um, it, so it's a misinterpretation by a lot of people who only so have a superficial understanding of my work that, you know, I do big paintings. And I think that was probably uh, in the 70s and 80s when, especially in the 80s, where a lot of the public institutions did buy large paintings, and so they've been seen, and they're the paintings that a lot of people know. So the works that go into private collections they're not so well known. And as you mentioned before, all these works are in private collections. So for over the last sort of 10 years, a lot of people haven't been aware of what I've been doing. And so there's a sort of misunderstanding to a certain extent that I'm still doing these big paintings, which I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 the intensity, the one-to-one -one relationship and the focus, um, really draw me to the scale of work, mm. yeah. 
Um, Angela is in S- South Canterbury is quite unique in the exhibition, um, mm. particularly um, in the treatment of the landscape and in the treatment of the space. Yeah, well, it's a landscape. It's unusual because it's a landscape. Most of the landscapes are from that I, uh, landscapes I know, which are primarily Banks Peninsula and some Dunedin. But this is a landscape I don't know. But it, I struck so much by the photograph, and I know the person, and it was the shadows and the light. It made, I had to paint this painting. Um, <clears throat> so I normally wouldn't paint a landscape that I don't know because knowing the landscape really helps you to you know, concentrate and helps you get through the painting. Mm. Mm. Because you can, perhaps if we, um, if everyone sort of, because, yeah, these he turns around <laughs> and faces the opposite corner, um, it, it leads us into um, the landscapes which are very familiar. Um, yeah. With, with Angela in South Canterbury, um, it's clearly a different landscape to what you see across, across the rest of the exhibition. Um, and it's also a very different kind of pictorial space, I think, you know, it's... And I, and the horizon I, I, line I, is yeah, very the, strong in that painting. The horizon and, and it's um, got this diminishing perspective, mm, and, mm. Um, which I guess was what was so impactful about the original photograph. Yeah. Um, whereas something very different is happening in these paintings. I wonder if you could talk a bit about... Well, um, yeah, so these are based on where I grew up, at, which is French Farm in Akaro Harbour. Um, and they're based, based on family photographs. And very, yeah, these are very strong. The pattern and the depth uh, are very strong in these works. Um, that's my daughter and that's my sister and um, a lot of them are based on uh, members of my family. Um, yeah. Are they, are they um, true <coughs> scenes? Hmm? I know they're based on people um, from photographs but is the whole construction of the image a... Um the whole construction of the image is a photograph. Right. Yeah, which to a certain extent there's a little bit of editing, but not much. Um, but they're based on sort of poor quality black and white photographs. So they allow a lot of uh, room for interpretation, you know, in the color and uh, the patterning and, uh, yeah. In that particular work, Magdalena at French Farm, there's, there's um, several iterations of it. Um, what's drawing you? Uh, it's just the, yeah, there are certain images, there are certain things that I repeat and um, I repeat them for because they, you know, they seem right, they stream a strong image. So that painting I've painted, yeah, two or three times. Yeah, and I would continue to paint it if I thought I could do more with it, but I, to me, I, I've ne- I'm pretty sure that I'll never paint that image again because that is sort of as perfect as I could get for that image. Now this image here isn't such a strong visual, this is, I've only painted this once and it doesn't have the same sort of appeal that that one does. I think, you know, it's just that single figure in the landscape, yeah. Um, Most of the paintings are just single figures in this series. Uh, What's the role of colour in the works if you're working from black and white source material? Well, the the colour of... Hmm... Uh, just to highlight and uh, give depth and um, add to the richness, yeah, yeah. intensity and... Uh, How long does it take you to paint one of these paintings, Jeffrey? Uh, it takes years and years because they're painted on with layers, so the painting is drawn in straight, there's no preparatory drawings or anything. So I, I draw the image in then I paint it, then I repaint it and repaint and often maybe the sky is painted ten times and the hills and carries on and on. So they, they take a long time, um, yeah, to get that clarity and depth. Yeah. And do you work on individual pieces? I'm usually working on a series, so I'm usually working on about seven or, seven or eight paintings at the same time, yeah. Um, and there are a few of these that I'm still working on that are unfinished, but uh, yeah. 
So it's a long progression and with that amount of time it allows you to sit and look at the paintings a long time and then to change, you know, a pole might be here originally and then you've changed it to here. And, you know, every bit is carefully considered and, um, yeah, built up. Um, this painting here is, is interesting to me in the context of the exhibition because a little like the first painting we looked at, um, it, it's, it's got a stronger bridge to the past, I think. Yeah. The relationship between the two figures in the work strikes me um, as, a, a, as a sort of a continuation of um, this theme in your work, um, for want of a better word, which is about the sort of tension between two individuals, um, you know, you sort of can see it starting to be set up in the relationship between the two figures in the work and that sort of psychological element of the painting. Um, yeah, yeah, it does relate to earlier works which are about the interaction between people and psychological, mm. emotional sort of issues. Um, How's it changing um, in this body of work? Well, there's not. That's all gone. So it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't exist. So, as you say, that bears traces of the past, and as does that one. But, I mean, this is. There is no tension. There's none of that in these paintings, and I'm no no longer interested in that aspect of um, yeah, painting or what painting can do. Um, now, it's something that has struck me in thinking about the work and, and hanging the exhibition, it becomes even more clear is that it's sort of becoming about a solitary figure um, and it's becoming about a, a close... Well, it's becoming about the figure and you. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's not... So if you're looking at that painting, you can almost, if you want to, have the beginning of a story, which I don't want to have any stories in my paintings anymore. It's just you in the, in the image. Uh, or you in the painting, so yeah, it's a richer experience. I'm not t trying to tell stories anymore, or interested in you know. And I guess that scale becomes quite an important tool in sort of brokering that relationship between the viewer and the work when when they're so small and and they're so direct um, in their. Uh, yeah, you can do um, tell stories in small paintings, and the paintings that I did in this. Mid seventies are much more. You look at them and that you see all this person, that you see all these symbols. All the symbols have gone, and um, the story lines gone. Um, so it's yeah, it's a reduction, reducing things down uh, to sort of just quite simple elements. So the f therefore the face and the figure has to carry more weight to make the painting sort of convincing. Yeah. So, it's a challenge. Should we move um, down to the other end of the gallery? I mean, there is a psychological element in these paintings, but it's all to do with the figure and, I mean, the landscape. It sort of forces you into just the, the central figure. Yeah, I think something that you can see really beautifully as you're kind of progressing or travelling through this exhibition um, around this corner and into, into this pair of portraits um, here is exactly what we've been talking about, that um, sort of increasing intensity yet reducing kind of... Um, the things that need to say it, yes, yeah, the form, yes. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's so a reduction. It's sort of so yeah. less is sort of more, in, in, in more intense but less things that need to be done to express that. Um, and also it's more what, it's more ambiguous about what the painting's about or what the people are saying, which I think is appealing too, you know, because where you have a lot of symbols and a lot of um, things, it's quite easy, well, you can make up this is this and that, but this is sort of, um, they have a fascination which I see in some of the Renaissance paintings that I saw in Europe where you don't know who the person is, you don't even, in some cases, you don't know who painted it, so you know very little about it, so the painting really has to carry all this information and convince you that, um, you know, to look at it or to have a dialogue with it. So you're having a dialogue with something that you don't know much about, which I think um, is a ch um, I find really appealing. So we don't know who that person is, and if I told you, it wouldn't make any difference. Um, 
And that's part of the reason that I don't sign the paintings either, because I want the whole experience to be, you're confronting something um, that, yeah, beyond time and beyond any sort of, um, yeah, conventional meaning or known meaning. It's something I think you see um, in the work, there's been a shift or there is a shift and it is something that Geoffrey has done throughout his career. He's a, um, a collector and accumulator of materials um, and source materials. But um, the early works we've talked about that, that are known places and known people, um, automatically I think uh, the audience has a degree of um, an ability to relate to those. They've got they've got yeah. a sort of a personal nostalgia, or they speak perhaps of an experience, a kind of collective experience um, mm. or, or of the past, or of looking through photographs. Um, and in these works, as you say, they become the figures are becoming very anonymous and androgynous. I think, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> particularly with those three um, yeah. portraits, it, it's... Um, yeah, you can see the progression, and yeah, because that's definitely a sort of male figure with the landscape. And mm -hmm. We don't really know whether that's male or female, and the same goes for these two around here. Uh, yeah, so... so are, they, are they your family photographs? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. So where, oh. is, where are these images coming at you um, from? They're basically just from source uh, from magazines or but I don't really know that it's that important where they came from they're just uh, they're just portraits see I find it quite interesting because um, when you step <coughs> into the world of the commercial media um, and the professional model which, which some of these are building or sort of jumping out of um, it, it too is a place where um, doesn't necessarily want to be familiar to the audience. Um, it's a withholding kind of platform as well, and I find that kind of an interesting thing. And to me, um, it, it's what makes these particular paintings feel very much of this moment, because I think that that's a, a dialogue in the popular culture right now, is sort of how we create identity or, or operate in an, in, in an anonymous way. Um, Mm. sort of in the busy world, digital world that we live in. Um, and it, it was kind of interesting, um, just sort of a random pop cultural connection that, you know, we were sort of at work busily talking about um, humans, you know, the, the television show about synthetic sort of cyborg people and, you know, that mm. artificial intelligence kind of apocalypse um, plot line that's popular right now and you know these works sort of started to kind of take on all of these um, very kind of contemporary um, associations just I think by the fact that just like those sorts of media sources you immediately can apply all sorts of things because they are like a blank canvas and it's a sort of um, to me a bit the way you speak of them is something that people can come to um, bring themselves to they sort of withhold quite a lot. Yeah, they um, do, yeah. Mm. And so therefore you're forced to kind of bring yourself to the work. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Do you find, um, to me, there's such a concentration in the precise lines you have. Do you have to concentrate a lot? Oh, hell yeah. Huh? I mean, to me it feels <laughs> as if it's so it's stressful, you've got to get every line correct. Yeah. Um, and of course, the paint, you know, is, is concentrating and I'm staring mm. at her, feeling quite stressed actually about even <laughs> looking at her. <laughs> but I feel, do you find painting a stressful kind of occupation? I mean, it's they're so... Yeah, it's very, in it's very intense and very concentrated. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's a very focused, um, you have to get in a certain space to be able to do it and it's, it takes a long time and you have to be very focused and concentrated to get that precision. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, which adds to the intensity of the, the, all the lines sort of are drawing into that face so, and that's helping to make the painting a much more intense sort of experience. Um, but uh, you have to be totally concentrated when you're working and totally focused so there's no distractions. Uh, and um, often the hills are painted, once again, quite a few times to get that 
the right depth and, and to get the sharpness of the line. So the first time they'll be a bit fuzzy. And in the past I would just sort of, sometime way back I painted a painting in a day, so it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be able to achieve that by painting uh, in that way. There's a um, series of photographs which have been taken sort of contemporary to these um, paintings in Jeffrey's studio and while I've been regularly sort of visiting and seeing the works, um, the more recent works coming to the end point, um, we didn't come down and what literally watch Jeffrey paint them. Um, and <coughs> Simon's photographs, um, one of which is in the book, which will come out in February, um, are quite a, an interesting sort of study in exactly that, the labour of making these works. And, and that sort of, not the hardship of making them, but, but they were laborious things. Um, you know, there's photographs... They're very constant. I use a magnifying glass and, you know, so I'm right about this far away from the painting and... Um, yeah, so, so very... painting under a magnifying and with, glass. And also and under lights, which sort of make it... Um, and uh, not physically on an easel either. Like oh no, never on an easel. No, none, none, none of them are ever um, painted on an easel. Or, or, or on, a, you know, on a pile of books on top of a desk with a magnifying glass and a tiny paintbrush. And, you know, it, it's quite a thing. Um, and I do think it's interesting, particularly when the paintings are mounted in this way, which, which is, is Jeffrey's preference. Um, and you notice things like the fact that the, the painting plane wraps around the board, for instance. And um, they they have a very strong presence um, as objects or as, as crafted paintings, you know, that they are tangible um, Yeah, objects, things. yeah, yeah, um, mm, have an object quality about them as well as being paintings, you know. Yeah, which mm. is a very rewarding thing, I think, you know, it brings the wonder um, in the sort of virtuosity to your encounter as an audience um, or as a viewer with the work. Um, do you want to talk about Anna and Jeremy? Mm -hmm. Anna and Jeremy um, have sort of become... On this side or...? Oh, either side. Yeah. Um, oh, here. Here we go. They've sort of become central to the way that we've been talking about this, this exhibition um, and Anna on the invitation and, and the, the two have become the sort of the front and rear cover of the book and and they've become really important, I think, to you, haven't they, Geoffrey? Uh, yeah, they're probably the most recent paintings and the most contemporary paintings. Um, and the newest paintings, yeah. Um, so they're slightly larger than these ones. And yeah, some people have said they're quite large for, you know, the work that are, are you know, in the series. And um, yeah, I th yeah, they have a sort of level of finish and refinement, I think taken a bit a step further. Mm. How do you see them as different to say the starting point of this exhibition? Uh, more well once again the figures are very uh, ambiguous in there you know whether they're male female um, this one has a male sort of it's a female but it has a male f presence and that has a sort of feminine it's a male but it has a feminine look about it. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I, I like the ambiguity and the um, the isolation, the strangeness, and the focus. And I think of all the paintings, these are the ones where, for instance, the landscape is is gone right back to um, almost a flat pattern. Um, you know, it, it's um, the landscape in your work. I think um, is it really interesting when you look at you know the evolution of New Zealand art history over the 20th century because. Um, yeah, I think in, the, in my text I talked about these works as stepping outside of the shadow of the kind of um, the canon, you know, the, the sort of yeah. the rolling kind of hills of what people expect the New Zealand landscape to be, yet it's all still there um, and I find that a really interesting position, feels... Um, they go beyond that. They that go far beyond it, yeah. but they sort of don't, they feel less burdened to me than. Yeah, than they're not burdened. No, they don't have. They're not sort of figures in the New Zealand landscape. No, no. no. They're um, yeah, and sort of portraits with some landscape. <laughs> yeah, Vincent um, O'Sullivan talked about the same thing about you know the the man alone and the man in the landscape kind of. Um, 
But they don't speak about that. No, 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 no position, and, that, and these to me aren't. You no. know, that figure is not in the landscape in the least, um, nor do they seem to want to be. Um, you know, the relationship between the two is very different. Mm. And, and as you say, the relationship and the, or the tension of these paintings is between the viewer and the subject. It is, yeah. Um, mm. Entirely. Mm, 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 and the landscape mm. seems entirely foreign to me. Um, yeah, the landscape is there, I think, just to as a background to sort of draw you into the fa figure, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I could never paint it just the landscape alone. It doesn't, it wouldn't, it doesn't hold enough interest. It's the only there as a, you know, thing for a, f a background, I suppose, or mm -hmm. a device, yeah. These four paintings all have uh, similar lighting. You've got a very harsh lighting coming from mm. the left, a deep shadow on the right. Mm -hmm. You've got a very stark horizon lit within a very brooding sky overhead. Can you talk a bit about how you settled on that? Uh, just to make the paintings much more sharp and sharper and then much more intense. So the sky, the light is, is very important to give that added clarity and depth. So some of the early, some paintings that I've done maybe before I, that are not in the series that are earlier, don't have that intensity because of the, the light isn't so, so strong. Um, uh, yeah. It's, and also, yeah, the faces, the shadow, yeah, I'm quite interested in even progressing further with that to give the paint, you know, gives the figures much more depth and, uh, much more uh, sculptural feel about them. Um, so they really are sort of coming out. So they're not flat. I mean, a lot of my really early painting in the 70s is just quite flat. There's no roundness or depth at all. Um, so yeah, that's an aspect of painting that you know, attracts me and that I'm working on. Yeah, but you can see it even in the first one there, which doesn't have the face. It's not as sharp as these ones. It's not, uh, you know, these ones have much more intense um, feel about them. And the landscape in that is much more relaxed, <coughs> maybe, but in here it's sort of like electric, uh, in, you know, in the tightness, yeah. So it's all to do with, to be able to produce a certain level of intensity and depth and ambiguity and uh, things that fascinate you so that, um, mm, so that it holds your attention. Oh yeah, it is. They're New Zealand paintings. The whole exhibition is New Zealand paintings. So I mean, I don't deny that. No, yeah, they're, they're, it is a New Zealand landscape. Yeah, but um, not a, not an identifiable not an identi uh, place you can identify. You know, I mean, it's a gen um, just using elements of the New Zealand landscape. Mm. You can sort of see in the two paintings um, on the far wall. You know that there's an interplay, and I guess there, it sets up a really nice contrast between, I think, where Jeffrey is um, pushing towards, and and um, what sort of foregrounded these works. Um, you know, these are paintings that are where where are they? They're from photographs, aren't they? They're yeah, they're from uh, <coughs> another important place. This is my grandparents. Um, uh, Canes Bay uh, on Banks Peninsula, and which was uh, an important place in my childhood, and I have a lot of photographs from there. So these are based once again on black and white photographs, or oh, that's actually based on a colour photograph, the one on the left. Um, but once the painting on the left, what attracted me is the same with the painting of Angela, is the strong light and the uh, which you know. I wanted to capture, so that drew me to that photograph. Also the composition and the mother-daughter, not a relationship, but just, um, you know, the figures, I think, yeah. The uh, painting on the right is, is a sort of, be was begun earlier, and the landscape is much more gentle and relates to how I did landscapes in the, maybe when I first started the series in the 70s. Uh, and so it doesn't, it doesn't have the tension or the, you know, it's not like these paintings at all. It's a lot softer. It's softer, yeah, it's softer painting and um, 
you can talk about the relationship between the figures maybe, but um, that's I think what, what's something I want to get away from. Yeah, it's quite interesting though, um, I, and it, might, it may be, I think, because of the um, photographic source material and that sort of mediation between, you know, the experience of people in a place and the ultimate sort of um, creation of the painting. When you look over Jeffrey's work in, the, in earlier times, um, there's a lot of activity taking place between the different characters in the picture. And the works sort of operate around this frenzied sort of level of activity between different people within the painting. Mm. Um, and these ones, even the w ones that speak, um, you know, to a slightly earlier time through the photos, because they're photographs, staged posed photographs, um, you do have this repeating sort of motif of the subject staring at you. Um, you know, they're not talking to each other. They're, they're looking at, at us, at, at the photographer. Especially or, the one on the yes. left. And, and I think yeah. it's, it's, um, it's, it's interesting, and it, to me, is very different to um, the, the pace, I suppose, or the, or the activity um, or tension, whatever you might like to call it, of, of um, an earlier period of work as compared to this um, yeah, these very still images and where the early works very quite busy and um, yeah, you, there's a lot of action and yeah, well stuff. Just, well, I find around. myself less inclined to think about what's mm. going on between those two people. Mm, no. um, I'm more interested kind of t to know what they're doing there and I think that's kind of an interesting thing and to me it's almost a cinematic thing. Um, you sort of want to know what, what's happening behind you that they're all looking at or um, you know it feels like that this is part of a, a bigger some sort of bigger narrative or, or but it's a there's no narrative at the same time which is um, quite a stimulating thing um, to think through I think when you're when you're encountering the work um, on your own terms. But people do I have you know I've noticed that when people come to the studio they don't in earlier days they would say, who's that, who's that, who's that? They don't say that anymore because that's not what the paintings are about or what they're conveying. They're conveying something else. Mm. So, mm. And perhaps if we slink around the corner. Um, um, this, this is sort of uh, a slightly, um, it's a little bit of a departure in this part of the exhibition um, in that we, we brought in um, a work which, uh, the, the bigger work, which sort of disrupts the, the little icon paintings, um, but it, it sort of felt like it was in this conversation um, that these works are having. Um, but as you see, it's, it's a much bigger painting. It, it's a work that was begun in the 70s and was revisited and, and sort of completed. Um, do you want to talk about how that is different to you or? I think well I think the size makes it different for a start off and um, when it was exhibited it's been exhibited in a dealer gallery along with two small paintings and when people came in they just looked at the big painting mainly and said that's the major painting which it was but the two small paintings were as good and as demanding of attention but just because of the size factor people will go and look at a bigger painting. Um, I think what's interesting in, in this work, when you consider um, its, its sort of origin in, in an earlier period of work, um, is that you can see there's a very different landscape that the ca characters are coming from. Um, yeah, the landscape is basically painted in the 70s, so I would find it quite hard probably to paint. I probably wouldn't paint that landscape anymore. Um, it's set in my grandparents' garden, and it's Christmas Day, and. It's a, fa a family photograph of myself and my brother and sister and cousins. Uh, and, you know, people have said it sort of relates to Rousseau and people like that. Um, and then if I had finished it when I started it, it would have a much more primitive, uh, awkward quality. But because I've finished it quite recently, it's, it's much more sophisticated or refined or um, much more finely detailed. Um, and so... Uh, but, uh, but because of the, the, it was such a major painting, people always said, you know, when are you going to finish it, you know, so. I, could, I finished it in conjunction with, you know, when I was working on the smaller paintings. Um, yeah. I guess for me, it sort of starts to, um, 
illustrate this this thing we were talking about before, where there's an internal activity in that work. Um, yeah, but the, fi the fi yeah the figures. It's interesting that the figures don't sort of relate to each other. There's no sort of they're all looking out in different directions, um, and some of them are looking at you, some are not. So yeah, once again, there's no sort of dynamic between the people. I don't think mm. you know in, in the storyline or. Mm. Um, the other works in here, um, the crucifixions, I think, well, the crucifixion is sort of this ever-present motif in Jeffrey's um, practice. Uh, and these four paintings are exceptionally interesting, I think, um, and very powerful when they've, we've sort of hauled them out and give them a little bit of space. But in the same respect, they are um, really the most recent works in the exhibition. Um, do you want to talk to, talk to those, Jeffrey? Uh, yeah, they're, as Lucy said, I've always used the crucifixion and um, used it mainly more now for just as a prop or uh, not really interested in religion at all, or it's just a device really. Um, and th yeah, the distortion in the butt figures, uh, like that's a sort of bird element in this, Red Sky one there. Uh, it's interesting and uh, playing around with the forms, I think, and distortion. But uh, the sharpness of the landscapes, once again, relates to, you know, the sharpness of the landscapes and the uh, well, paintings they're, over they're, there. They're very heightened works. You know, the colours are, are Sort of once, once again, it's this, uh, you know, to get the most intensity yeah. possible out of a painting. And um, yeah, once again, the size is really important, and I really like working on that size. Um, so, you know, a small painting is as powerful as something, you know, eight feet by six or whatever. Um, and the fact that you sort of, you know, you have to get up really close and peer into them. But uh, yeah, the formal elements are you know, in a painting, you know, uh, attract me quite a lot or more and more um, than they, they did, you know, when I did earlier paintings. I wasn't so interested in, you know, the structure of a painting. I think when Vincent um, and I were talking about the texts for the publication and, and he's particularly interested in the crucifixions, um, you know, and, and their relationship to um, Historic crucifixion yeah. paintings, which I know you're interested in mm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things he discusses, and, and it is, is quite an interesting line of inquiry, I think, around the kind of nature of the grotesque in art and, and your sort of ability to um, sort of capture that some sort of uh, balancing act between something that is grotesque and ridiculous and, and cartoonish. Um, and something that is sort of um, fundamental, I think. Um, and that's, to me, what is really interesting about these paintings. Um, Don't you know, think they're grotesque. <laughs> Vincent. Or cartoon-like. Well, yeah. You see, I think they're, they're, but yeah, this to make something ugly beautiful or something, yes. yeah, yeah, something that is like deformity. Mm. But to, yeah, make a very beautiful painting, um, which has elements of uh, that, yeah. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and no, I think he, he's... Um but, yeah, that has been a part of my work, though, that, yes. that um, the sort of um, grotesque or yes, yes. element. But... Uh, I think the, the image we've, he sets up, um, you know, mm, uh, with mm. the, the, the crucifixion, the historic crucifixion mm. in, the, in the book, of these mm. works, and it's very interesting, I think, um, to see the, the relationships and the points of departure yeah. um, between those things. It's mm. sort of like you, you can only get so far away um, and then all of a sudden you pull straight back um, to the heart of it. It's, it's mm. a very interesting form um, and motif for um, sort of walking that tightrope, I think. Yeah. Um, I think now's probably a good time if there's more questions um, that people have. Um, about any of the works in the exhibition um, to open up the floor. Hi. Hi, Jeffrey. <laughs> um, just a question about your career as an artist. And 
a lot of people realise that it's quite a struggle. But I wonder what is it that has kept you going and pulled you through this processes of exhibitions and changing things? What is the pivotal thing for you? Uh, just the vision of the work and the vision of uh, creating a body of work that hopefully is going to last a long time and also just trying to equal a lot of the painters that I admire. Um, so yeah, I want to leave behind this, what I hope is an important body of work and there's still, it's just the trying to achieve something better or move on, so move on to different levels and uh, so you're not just going like that, you're Hope, you know, hopefully you're going like that and achieving things. So, um, yeah, and I hope this is what this body work actually does. It's moved onto a, a different level from my previous work. So, and that encouraged me, encourages me to go on, you know, because it's a sense of achievement to a certain extent. So, so if you're just repeating and doing the same work all the time and it's all at the same level, yeah, that's not very exciting. And so you're not, you, but you are a, a supported artist, like you're an established artist. Mm -hmm. you still, yeah. You but still have the support from the, you know, from society. But what if you, you don't think about that when you're working with you? I think, yeah, well, you think about it when all, you don't have any money and the bills and all that. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, well, you know, you, you have to choose. Uh, so I've had, I've had long periods with nobody and no support, um, even though I'm established. So it's the work that keeps you going. Um, hmm. And just a, another question, sorry. Another question about the, the figures with the feet. The, and like, um, they seem to be embedded in the land. Yeah. And that's quite a recurring thing with this work. And um, also with the sky, it's like the heads are yeah, I like the element of the, which attracts me a lot in photographs of, of where the head is cut off and the sky. So uh, it sort of adds some tension or something. To, it's like the cropping aspect. Um, it gives it a more, I don't know what it does, but it does something. Well, it seems like, to me, it's like the elements of the, of the sky and the land, the connection with both, and then bring the focus back to the identity of the figure. The of that. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Could be. That's, that's your interpretation. <laughs> uh, it's open to any interpretation, but. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, did you know that you would be using the black frames in, in that way when you were creating this series of paintings? Was that kind of integral to the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I did, I started doing these sort of small paintings in 1974 and I used to frame them myself and I just had black, they were badly framed. On just, I made them myself on black but they were stuck down on this black and um, some early, someone of recently, um, yeah, no, a long time, quite a long time but anyway framed one of them with it lifted up and so I've gone on from there. But the frames are a very integral part of the painting, yeah. Um, yeah, to isolate them and I don't know, it adds the, more, the drama, you know, much more dramatic. And some people, a few people of, of some of the paintings I've seen in the 70s have framed them in cream and white and I can't stand it, you know what I mean. To, and I think it's a sort of thing to try and soften them, to make them more acceptable. Um, so, I mean, some people don't like the intensity and they try and, but they shouldn't buy them, they shouldn't have them, you know. <laughs> Because that, that's what they're about. Don't you know? They don't you can't bleed it out with a nice cream frame. You know, hmm. <laughs> that's what they try to do. Some people. The perennial artist's problem. It's oh. What people put around your work. Uh, yeah, we well, can. Um, be well, and especially in works like this, it could be quite damaging. I think. Or you know, from the intention of what the work is about. Um, Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah. Just a bit pragmatic, 
You say that you don't sign or you haven't signed. No, no, no. Well, same generations to come, do you sign on the back? Because yeah, they yeah. might know that's Jeffrey. Yeah, they will. <laughs> There's a book. Yes, your body. Your, your body of work. But it's not really, I'm not really concerned whether it's my body of work, I'm just concerned that the paintings are out there. And I don't really care if I did them or not, but um, it's not about personal um, thing. I mean, Botticelli only signed one painting, so all the rest. So then there's, you know, people, I think people will find out that they, I did them. But, um, but I don't think, once again, I don't think it's so important who did them, you know. It's the fact they exist and you can look at them and experience them without saying, I think there's too much of that, the artist's personality and people saying, oh, this is a Van Gogh that's Medigliani, you know, then you look, you know, and they don't really care whether they're good or bad or, they say, oh, that's by so-and-so, that's by so-and-so, that's so and so. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's worth so much. And, uh, Mm. What the gender of the person no. is. But here I think the androgen is actually a provocative gender swapping from the usual. It probably is, yeah. yeah. They, they have a female aspect about them. Mm. Mm. So, how does gender fit? And at different times, was gender playing a different role for you? It's once again, it's about the ambiguity um, and also tr not the, the paintings and, are not able to be interpreted um, precisely, which attracts me. I don't like a straight reading or someone can say this is that and that. I like to, the fact that you can't analyse it or you can't get a sh complete reading as the fascination, you know. It's like the Mona Lisa, we don't know who it is or if they do know now, that sort of ruined it, you know, to a certain extent. But it's just the fact you're looking at something and there's a wonder of what is it? Is this, was, is this male or female or is this this or what? It's, Always the fascination of looking at painting, I think. Yeah, they're pr mainly uh, Italian and early Renaissance painting and Northern Renaissance painting like Van Eyck or Van der Weyden or uh, Frangelico and people like that in early 15th, 16th century Italian painting or Northern Renaissance painting attracts me because a lot of them are painted on this size, yeah. And also the work's very, has an intensity and a clarity that and a purity, um, where a lot of later painting becomes darker and more muddy and more, I don't know, it's not, uh, it doesn't hold the attention for me that some of them, when I first started painting I was much more attracted by uh, early 20th century expressionism, um, but it doesn't, I find those Renaissance paintings much more intense, much more focused and much more, have much more clarity and purity which is something that you find less and less and, you know, and as we go on and with civilization. Um, so it's a sort of, I want to do something like that, which is in a way opposite to a certain extent of how we live and how the world's going, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Excellent. Well, if there um, is no more burning questions, um, as I said, I'm sure Jeffrey would welcome um, any personal um, questions, well not, not personal too. questions, but <laughs> <laughs> not, questions on a, not, not off personal. camera, um, and otherwise I'd just really like to thank you Geoffrey um, for the work um, you've put into the project, um, for being here today and being prepared to speak to everyone, um, for making the paintings and persevering um, throughout your life, um, and thank you all for coming today. Mm -hmm.